in the Smart Growth Audit will focus really on Philadelphia, California. Um, and so Palo Alto was incorporated in order to house Stanford University. They later annexed Mayfield, which is this random piece of land to the southeast. It's located in between uh, San Francisco and San Jose, and it's located within Santa Clara County, which has an urban service area, which I would classify as a unique accommodating approach to growth management. Um, it's also located in what's called Silicon Valley, which is a high-tech corridor. Um, Facebook and um, Apple are located over in these areas. And so the current population is about 64,000, and they have about 90,000 jobs. Uh, the growth rate um, from now until 2020 in terms of population is about 10%, and um, they're expected to grow their jobs by about 17%. Uh, this is the land use map. The yellow is single-family housing. Green is open space, which is uh, together the majority of the land use classifications in the zoning code. Uh, this leads to four different growth management challenges that I've identified, which are air quality, a jobs housing imbalance, open space preservation, and affordable housing provision. So the first growth management challenge that I'll touch on is air quality. Uh, this map shows its location in between the Santa Cruz Mountains and the San Francisco Bay, um, which naturally um, leads to bad air quality because it's located within the basin. And then uh, highways 280 and 101 bisect it, and those are pretty high capacity highways. Um, and so they're in non-attainment status with both state and regional regulations, um, but they are in attainment with EPA standards. So that's because California has some stricter regulations. Um, so the comprehensive plan focuses on uh, remedying this problem through decreasing the BMT. And the strategies that they lay out are to implement a mixed-use land pattern and promote alternative transportation modes. Uh, the second and third challenges stem from their jobs and housing imbalance. Uh, Stanford Research Park ho holds about 6,000 businesses and over 76,000 employees. Um, but the city holds about 3.5% of Santa Clara County's population and 9% of its jobs, which is a pretty severe imbalance. Um, further, the median single-family home value is over a million dollars and the median income is 126000 So even though those are high numbers um, in relation to each other, um, it's pretty unaffordable. And so um, most uh, residents are cost burdened. And then this inflow outflow map just shows that the majority of uh, people are coming into the city to work, um, yet a small percentage live and work there. Um, only 6,000 people work there out of the, or, and live there out of the 90,000 jobs. So open space preservation is uh, the fourth challenge. Um, this is a real source of community pride and a strong contributor to the city's um, desirability. It's over 55% of the land use classified in the code. <clears throat> Further, it's a built-up community. About half a percent are, um, of the code is uh, vacant land. And they have some regionally significant preserves, um, including the baylands here, which is home to a lot of wildlife habitat. And then the mountains um, are a growth challenge. You can't really build in them. Um, but they have 4,500 acres of parkland total. So my first recommendation is to reconnect the street grid. This is just a zoom in of kind of the core of the area. And you can see that because um, the city was built out in the time that it was, there's a lot of curvilinear street pattern, a lot of separation of uses. Um, and so uh, the comprehensive plan doesn't really talk about how they're going to reevaluate the street grid or um, implement a mixed-use land pattern because it's very hierarchical. So I think that they really need to do that in the next uh, plan in order to decrease auto use and pollution. Uh, the second recommendation is to increase financing for affordable housing. These two tables really drive home the point that it's just not affordable um, to live in this area. And they're also having um, a really hard time meeting their fair share of housing, and they're in a fight with the regional government right now about their population numbers because the planner said that they just don't have um, the money to implement it, which is interesting. Um, and so, all, not only is home ownership um, a problem, but about 35% of renters are also cost burdened. They do have a below market rate program, um, which allows for a three to one ratio. So, um, for every three units of regular housing, um, developers need to provide one unit of affordable, um, but it's just not enough to meet their fair share. So, I think they could do an impact fee on future employment development. Um, possibly tied to that 17% uh, growth rate in jobs that they see uh, in to 2020. Um, so the next recommendation is to remove their 50-foot height restriction. I think this is the number one barrier to implementing their mixed land use um, code. And it could, without removing this restriction, it could result in greenfield development and further um, hamper their efforts to provide affordable housing. 
Uh, this quote shows some reaction to a proposed development. Um, this is 50 foot, but the front of it is actually 70 foot, and it's um, uh, being fought at the neighborhood level. And so they think that it's kind of that sacred cow restriction. People just really don't want to remove it. Um, and so finally, um, they need to solve their impermanence syndrome. So I noticed in the comprehensive plan that residential uses are allowed in open space at a 10 acre minimum. And I just don't think that this is um, really sufficient in order to prevent open space development considering it's 55% of land use and with the development pressures um, they currently have. So I recommend that they would increase to 50 acre minimum or possibly do like a conservation easement um, or acquire the development rights. It seems like a pretty local community and they can maybe get some fundraising for that. Um, and this picture is a view of the research park from Foothills Park, which is in the mountains, and you can see that development is encroaching, and um, you know it just kind of drives home the point that they should um, have something more permanent. And uh, that is my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Do you know the origin of that 50-foot height restriction? Was that uh, earthquake related or? Um, I didn't hear anything about earthquakes, but I do know that it was implemented in the 70s, and I think people wanted to keep their quality of life. Um, it just seems like it's a very, like, the single, how do I explain this? So, it's a very, I don't know, it's a pretty community, and they just didn't want to um, have any, like, shadows or, like, parking from dense development. And that's throughout the entire city? Yeah, and I mean, the city, it's just, it's really small. Yeah. And so, okay. but, but yeah, it's throughout the city. Yes. What's the big gray, possibly industrial area? That's the research part. Okay. Yeah. How does the city, uh, could you go back to the first uh, map? Yeah. So, with that new, I mean, can you, the map before that, I guess. Are those two areas, so are both of those dark areas, or is that both um, the city? Yeah. Are they contiguous? Um, they are, but it's all open space. Like you can see here, that is the gap that you see in the black and white map oh, because it's a preserve. So this is the, all the mountains here. So they annexed it, but it's just open space. Okay. But they are contiguous. So none of the so they all that land is designated as open space. None of it is. Right. Okay. I may have missed this. Was there a specific motivation for that annex? Yeah, actually during prohibition, so there was very, um, some very uh, academic people who didn't like the fact that there was like drunks living next door, and so um, Mayfield didn't want to put like prohibition restrictions on itself, so Stanford um, actually annexed the land so that it would comply with those regulations. Academics are not like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So what's the total impermanized area of the roughly? So there's is? only half a percent that's vacant land. So it's considered built out. So urbanized would be like Well most I guess how many square miles is the city? I actually don't know. Oh okay. Sorry. Um it seems like Palo Alto and a lot of the cities in that region are really small in comparison to the region as a whole. Like what mechanisms are in place to coordinate the rift between the different municipalities? I didn't really see a lot. Um, in the comprehensive plan they talk a lot about being a regional leader, but they don't talk a lot about regional collaboration. And from talking with the planner, she actually seemed to be pretty combative against the regional government um, because they don't want to have the high population numbers because they don't feel like they can meet the housing needs. So I don't Um, can you just talk a little bit more about their regulations or intensity and like, what were the minimum and maximum densities? They actually have a really good uh, minimum and maximum density, um, but the fact that it's a 50 foot height restriction, it just it doesn't make sense talking to the planner and then looking at the comprehensive plan because if you look at the comprehensive plan, you'd think that this would be a very uh, mixed use high density area. Uh, and so they do allow like, accessory units in most of um, the single family areas. They also allow single room occupancy units. Um, so there's a lot of diversity in, in their housing stock in terms of what's the 
I just wanted to know what the numbers were. I don't have much time. Did you mention transit in here or what kind of access they have? Yeah, so Caltrain runs through um, the area which goes south from San Francisco all the way down to San Jose. Um, but that's the only um, regional transit. BART doesn't go down there. So they do have buses. Okay, thank you.